Hi, it's Clinton. I got a really cool demo here to show you that we've been working on and we're going to continue to refine. It basically shows you the superpower of OpenZD application embedded zero trust networking, where we have a server that will be listening on the overlay network, not the underlay IP based network that people who can access this, this demo will be able to, to um, interact with. And so let's, let's take a look at what that demo looks like. Really quick, you'll see we have this landing page. It says, make a name, make it unique. It's best to use an email address. So it really is, but I'm just going to use the phrase something unique. And I want to say, add me to OpenZD. And if you don't want to bother, you don't have to bother with it. So we're going to head and add that button. And you'll see, just like that, we've gotten a identity provisioned for us on the OpenZD overlay network. But we haven't downloaded anything. We don't have access to anything just yet. We do have some nice instructions to follow. It says, first, you can clone this repository. We go out and we take a look. This is the repository that's running. This main program is the one that is actually providing this demo page. You can look at the index.html. And this is the pretty HTML that you see from the index page. But that's not important right now. Let's get right into the demo. So it says we're going to clone the appetizer. So why don't we go ahead and go to our terminal. On the top here, you'll see my local computer. I run Windows. And on the bottom, you'll see I have SSH to, to that demo server. And so if I do a PS minus EF pipe grep for open ZD demo, you'll see it is running out here. Now let's go ahead and run that clone command that the instructions told us to do. Cloning appetizer. And now let's CD into the appetizer folder. Now it says, save your token where you clone that repo. Go ahead and download that token. Temp open ZD demo appetizer. Something you see. My token's called something unique. We'll just save that token. And so now we can run the sample programs. And here's a little visual about what we're going to do. We're going to run a three client server applications. The client is going to be reflect client, the math client, and the curl Z client. And they're all going to talk over the OpenZD overlay network to a server that is listening on the OpenZD overlay and not the IP based underlay. So the first one we'll run is this reflect server. And what, we'll, what it will do is it will start a client up. Actually, let's tail the OpenZD demo service. And you can see if I tail it, new connection accepted. If I turn this off, you'll see end of function. If I turn my function, my, my client back on again, <clears throat> and we are compiling it each time, so it's a little bit slow. And the first time you compile this, you'll have to download a whole bunch of dependencies. Um, but you'll see this line will be sent to the reflect server and returned. So it says, uh, what's up reflect server. And you can see down here, the server is about to read a string. It read what's up reflect server and then responded with you sent me what's up reflex server. And you can see on the client, you sent me what's up reflex server. And so right there, I have done a, uh, a bunch of messages and I have a client that is attached to the server over the OpenZD overlay. If we run a quick SS minus LN PP, actually let's run it in the sudo, you'll see the only port that the OpenZD demo is running is on port 18,000. And if we look, if I go back to my home computer and I do the same thing, sudo, uh, actually I can't because it's uh, Windows. I got to do command.exe and do a net stat. If I look for port 18,000, which is what I should be connecting to, actually, let's do an ANO because it's Windows. No, not ANMO, ANO because it's Windows. You'll see I get no results. It's because this client has no port connected to 18,000. It is connected to 8440, though. 8440. 8441, 8442. That's the one. That's the magic. That's This is the data plane port. So this is the controller's. The, sorry, the router's port that it's listening to. If I turn this off, you'll see my connection will no longer be established and no longer have port open to 8442. And this is representative of the client connecting to the router. And so that's what, that's what this is demonstrating. Again, if I turn on my reflect client and then I turn on, uh, I, I run the same net stat after it's running, you'll see I have a new connection established and it's got a new ephemeral port but it's still going to the router on 8442. So what we've demonstrated is this reflect server connecting into the OpenZD overlay network, 
and then over to the application server, which is listening on the overlay and has no listening ports. That's really cool. Let's finish our demo. We're going to do some math. We'll run some math here. And you'll see when I run the math client, it's an HTTP based service. So it actually tells you I'm connecting to this URL. That's where it's trying to actually send traffic to. You'll notice I can't curl there. If I try to curl to HTTP service, it'll just sit here and say, I can't resolve the host HTTP service. And yet I was still able to do this curl. So if we take a look real quick at the client and let's look at the um, math.go, you can see what it's doing. So here's the math.go. There's the main uh, function. You can see it takes six arguments. Um, one of the arguments is the service name. So that should be arg0. Where's arg1? Arg Sorry, where's arg1 referenced in here? It's a reference down where we're doing. Our... Oh, I know where it is. It's actually, uh, there it is, URL. So here's where we get the URL that we're going to connect to. If it starts with HTTP, then we'll just use HTTP. But in this case, we prepended it for you. Um, we then read arg2, which go back and look at our actual demo. Uh, arg2 is the JWT file to use. Arg3 is the operator one. Oh, sorry, the input one. Arg4 is the operator and arg5. Five. At five. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six uh, is the um, input two. So if we go back and look at the actual client again, it assigns arg3 to input one, arg4 to operator, arg5 input two, and then builds a URL, which is then used to actually make an HTTP based request. Actually, let's take a look at that. We are making a straight up HTTP get request. So we're making a new ZD client, which is actually creating a new Go based or, or standard library HTTP client and creating a get URL, get request to that particular URL. And that's how we are running our math client. And just to prove that it actually is doing mathematics, I don't know what will happen if I use a star here in Windows shell. I think it'll work. If you're in bash, you need to quote that star. But in Windows, you don't need to quote it. Um, so we could also do something like 10 divided by 5. Again, it's compiling each time. So it does take a little bit longer than it normally would if I had built all this stuff myself. And 10 divided by, oh, 10 times 5 is 50. Well, I could have done divided by. Anyway, that's the math example. Let's do the curl Z example real quick. Also doing the same exact, actually, let's put clear in here as well. It's doing the same sort of thing. The only difference is it's going to go to a different URL, not slash math. And if you go to the, uh, the base URL like this, you just get a response from the server. And so if we go back and we SSH to that machine and we do a host name, you'll see the host name is IP 172.31.74.200. And that's what this does. And so right there, we've shown you a secure Zero Trust Overlay Network connections from clients to those edge routers landing at a server, all with code that you can go and run yourself if you just go out and clone the OpenZD Test Kitchen slash appetizer. And that's our eight minute, well, almost nine minute demo. I hope you enjoyed it. Cheers.